good Wednesday evening. I had to kind of look up because I was trying to figure out like what day it was just to make sure I had it right. My gosh, the days are running together. I'm broadcasting, babe. <laughs> good evening. Are you guys up? What are you doing? It's 930. You guys seeing the title? Words. Wow. Such a simple, the word word is such a simple word. However, it's so powerful and it's so impactful. Um, you guys remember when we were young, how um, people would say that um, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt me. It's a lie. Words are so impactful. Um, I never imagined, I don't think I ever put into thought um, just how powerful words were. Um, but it has been a, I don't even want to use the word passion, um, an extreme interest. Hey, Andrea, how are you, dear? Of mine, um, studying the impact that words have, you know, on our life and <clears throat> on our destiny. For those of you who are entrepreneurs, um, the impact that words have on our destiny. When we all first started out, we actually started with a clean slate. So when we came into this world, butt ball naked. Uh, we came with a clean slate. So there was um, like a, a platform, if you want to call it, waiting to receive information. And um, based on the information that we received at that time, it began to form um, who we are, some of us who we are now, uh, but definitely who we were at that time in our life. So we had no idea um, what sound was. We were startled by everything around us uh, because we had come from an environment that um, for most of us, words were something we weren't accustomed to. Um, when I was preparing for this particular broadcast, I remembered when I was pregnant with my daughter and I remember reading to her often. So I'm an avid reader. Put avid reader in the comments if you too um, love to read. Give me one second. I'm going to make this share that I made just a little bit clear, more clear. Um, it actually just gave a URL and not the actual um, broadcast. Okay, if you're a first timer, we got a couple rules around this camp. Uh, put your name in the comments. Let me know what you do, how you rock out in the world, how you serve in the marketplace. If you are clear on what your superpowers are, drop a couple of those in the comments too. If this is not your first time at the rodeo, put hashtag renew. Hashtag renew. Avid reader. Yes, I am as well. Listen, I got the, I've been getting... I can't even explain to you guys um, the the feeling that I have at this stage in my life and in my business. But I've been getting the the best um, emails. I've been like waking up to these very encouraging emails from my clients. And when we said avid reader, I thought about the fact that in one of my emails, my recent emails, they were sharing with me, you know, that they were an avid reader and just a couple other things. And I was like, you know, God is so awesome because I am so in alignment. My clients are so in alignment and I know um, what is happening. And it's because I'm in alignment. It's because I have aligned fully with my brand's DNA. Um, the makeup of who I am and my brand and who I'm called to serve and um, I'm focused, right? 
uh, because I think it's really easy when you're in the entrepreneurial space, especially on social media, where you can just lose track of your vision. Um, and I'm so focused and I'm just grateful. It's a, an amazing blessing for those of you who are aspiring coaches, teachers, or trainers. Um, one second. Maybe if I stop and go ahead and do it. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who are coaches, teachers, or trainers, there's nothing more powerful how it can, than when you get an alignment. When you, um, and, and that happens, guys, from really getting clear about who you are and taking off all the masks and all of the um, ideas of how, you know, it should be done. Um, now, success does leave clues. There are um, things that bring us to a measure of success, but I feel what has happened in this entrepreneurial space as far as social media is concerned is so many people are walking around doing things they don't love, um, being people that they aren't fully in alignment with um, because they aren't clear. And sometimes who we are... Um, we don't feel like it's enough, right? And so we start taking on all of these other avatars. <laughs> you guys seen all of the avatars running down social media here lately? I mean, I think some of them are cute. I just used it. Um, it just actually popped up um, in my head. But we take on all of these avatars that are not our own. And in that process, we lose one of the most important and significant things to building a brand and that's um, being able to authentically um, be who we are so that we can attract the people that we are assigned to. Um, whether you're offering a, a product that you sell or a service, there are specific people who are um, waiting. They're waiting for you to show up fully. Sometimes who we are showing up as has been impacted by the very words that we hear. I was sharing with you all that I was thinking about when I was pregnant with my daughter because we all come into the world with a clean slate. Like, it's so clean. And then we get all this um, information downloaded into our, um, let's, let's call it a human processing board, right? And it kind of dictates and determines what we do in our life and in our business. But I was thinking when I was preparing for this particular broadcast, I was thinking about when I was pregnant with my daughter and how I used to read to her, you know, in the womb. And um, I was just a reader anyway, so, you know, it kind of came natural. And I was also thinking back to the fact when she was 15 months, she could clearly pronounce 27 words. And I know it was 27 because I have this book that... Um, I bought that she couldn't she couldn't read, um, but it was about girls. It was about it was by Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah, I think it said "Girls Rule the World" something like that. And on the inside of that book, I wrote down every single word that she was able to say at that time. And she was 16 months when I bought the book. Not that she could read it, but you know, I knew she would have it. And um, I remember reading back later, like, wow, you know, 15 months. And then at three years old, she was able to read full sentences and all of that. I remember buying this program called My Baby Can Read. Any of you all heard of that? My Baby Can Read? It's kind of old now, but um, that along with some other stuff I was doing, it worked. Because she was reading at the age of three. And I'm just thinking about all of that today because, you know, we, we really start out with a clean slate. And so what's put on that slate impacts how we move. I'm going to be talking about how words are forming your destiny right now, um, whether it's the destiny of your brand or um, the destiny of your life, how they are forming your destiny. Somebody put that in the comments. Words are forming my destiny. Words are forming my destiny. A couple more rules before we get going. If I say something that helps your business or your life in any measure throughout this broadcast, do me a little favor. It's a little button on your left-hand side that says share. You can press it. <laughs> Did you guys know you could press that button? You can press it and share it with someone else who could use the message who needs to understand 
how impactful words are to their life, their business, and the destiny that they're designing, whether they know they're designing it or not. If someone was so kind to share the broadcast and, you know, you see me and you're like, who's this lady? I am Tanya Wilson Cherry. I am the growth strategist, business coach and mentor to women in business just like yourself, helping women build brands that profit more, attract their perfect people. And we do that by a process called brand clarity, where I help you identify and really get clear on your brand's DNA. When you figure that thing right there out, guys, everything for you in your business and brand building process will shift. Well, that coupled with a few things that, that you do, like implement in your mindset and things of that nature, but there'll be so much clarity about what it is that you're doing. Um, your profits and your process will happen quicker, sooner, faster. Not only do I help women to build brands that profit more, but I help them grow businesses that um, fund their lifestyle and not run their lifestyle. So many women are overwhelmed and consumed with the process of brand building. And a lot of it is found in their productivity, in time management, in what they're paying attention to, a number of things. But I've created tools that help women become more productive. Time freedom is one of my top five values. And many of the women who come to uh, work with me or have me support them in their business building process, they value time as well. And so I give you strategies to build a business that allows you more time freedom as well as financial freedom. I focus from a three-point perspective, abundance mindset. Somebody put that in the comments. Listen, we're going to be talking about words tonight and I'm going to show you how words can be words of lack, even when, it, <clears throat> even when it doesn't feel like it, right? You wouldn't even think that certain scenarios are based on based from a space of lack. But we're going to talk about that, and of course, we're going to talk about abundance mindset. But I focus from a three-point perspective. Abundance mindset, personal growth. Guys, your business just ain't going to grow past the level that you do. You may hit numbers in your business, but what will happen, you will always come back to the last point that you decided to grow. When you take you growing and your personal growth as one of the most important things that you do, everything in your business building process will shift. All of the thoughts you have about doing the stuff that you don't do and the procrastinate, all of that stuff, personal growth will help you grow your business. I believe it is a soundboard for what you desire for your next. And of course, I teach some amazing results-driven uh, business building strategies. So here and again, I said we start from a blank slate. So as a child, when we're first born, the words that we hear from anyone impact us so much. I remember uh, my daughter was probably about two years old and I remember being in church and my pastor said, because, you know, at two years old, we start saying um, they so bad, they in terrible tools and, you know, things like that, that we've adapted and adopted from society and what society says. Right. Gosh, we are so powerful. Our, our words are probably one of the most powerful things that God has given us outside of our minds. And they intertwine. They Those two things intertwine. But I remember my pastor sharing how, um, let me see if this is going to come back on for us. It's not, but the, I think you guys can still see me though. My, um, I may have a short in one of my ring lights. So, um, and it was perfect timing because my daughter was two, just turning two at the time. And she said, be sure not to call the children bad call the behavior bad, address the behavior, not the child. Because many of us have had words spoken, spoken over us that our parents have innocently said. And I say innocently said because remember I said we start with a clean slate and nobody just really intentionally, right, wants to bring harm to their, their children. That's not the natural design. 
but so many of us have been impacted by words that have been spoken over us as a child. I'm going to give you guys an example. Now, if you connect with me, one of the things that is going to happen for you is you are going to go deeper in your thought process, in your thinking, and in your awareness of your thoughts. My job is to provoke you to think bigger than where you currently are. So here's here's the thing, right? So recently, um, I went in my daughter's room and I asked her something. And she had like this funny looking face on, right? And I said, um, why are you looking at me with that ugly face? And I caught myself immediately and changed the words. Because you guys know I didn't mean, you know, she had an ugly face. But I understand the power of words. So I said, why are you looking at me with that, that ugly facial expression, right? With that expression on your face. And I did that because I understand that <clears throat> our brain is just receiving information. And for a child who is still processing who they are, what people think of them, you know, I'm the person that sets the guideline at this stage for how she feels about herself, how she thinks about herself. And so I'm mindful with my words, right? We say things like, um, why are you making that ugly face? all the time, right? Just a simple thing that flows out of our mouth. But if we aren't careful, we could be spewing bad seeds that we don't even recognize. And I was so blessed as I share with you all that when my daughter was two, I remember my pastor making that statement and it made me become really aware of the words that I was speaking over my child. Many of you may have had even a parent figure or an authority figure say something to you that has still been impacting you to this day, right? That is impacting how you build your business. And one of the first things you have to do is release the fact that those words were spoken over you because no one says those words. No one says um, disempowering words that is fully in awareness. So many people are just spewing out to us either what's been said to them or, you know, something that they aren't even aware of. It's become a normalcy. Have you all ever been around families and um, most of their words are condescending? Most of their words are harsh or and they they're kind of laughing and joking. You know, it's just their nature and they don't even realize that they are creating Hey, Christina, how are you, dear? They don't even realize that those words are creating or having an impact in, in the person's life, right? Because it's become the family's nature to talk kind of harsh, and, you know, and then make jokes and crack jokes about it. But whenever we're in a situation like that, we got to understand that we got to forgive people because they really don't know. It takes me back to... Um, me being in a toxic relationship where it was verbally and um, emotionally abusive. And I was, you know, I'm normally thinking and processing when I'm about to come on with you guys about what I want to share. And it normally takes me back to, you know, some space in my life where I learned the lesson or where I experienced, you know, something that I'm sharing with you all. And I thought about how something that I have been building for like 10 years took me two years once I got out of the environment where the words weren't empowering, where the words weren't healthy. Do you guys get that? You guys tap the screen. If you understand the power that words actually have, people say all this time, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. It's a lie, right? Because one of the advantages I had during the time that I was in a toxic relationship was as a child and prior to that relationship um, in, in up until, you know, coming out of high school, I had affirming words. I've been told I could do anything. So I was able to at least take those pieces of, of the foundation. And even though um, in my mind, um, I, it was like the what I knew, my truth, was battling against what was being spewed out and said to me all the time. Does that make sense to you all? But words are impactful because 
It was taking me forever to complete a vision that had I been in the right environment could have been done in three years. And so our words are either empowering us, right? To move forward, to push forward, to have momentum or not. Remember I said a lot of times we've been accustomed to words that have become our normalcy. So much so that we don't even think they're negative. So much so that we don't even think the words are negative, right? I gave you guys an example of, of a family that just like, they talk bad to each other and it's just their way. That is how they relate to one another. Um, and it's actually causing, it's, it's planting seeds, right? So words create possibility and potential. Words create possibility and potential. If the words have not been affirming, if they've been negative, if they've caused distraction, then it lessens the possibility <clears throat> and it lessens the potential. Words have power. Words can be used to uplift your personal energy and improve your life. Listen. So many are in a comfort zone with what they <clears throat> allow in their ear gates. I am so <clears throat> certain about the power of words that even on social media, I'll snooze people, I'll block people, I'll do all the things to protect my ear gates because I understand the impact and the power that words have on my destiny. And what I want you guys to do on this evening is to be really, make yourself a promise. Make yourself a promise that you will be intentional about what you listen to. Now, the thing about this is if you are in a space where you don't know that it's negative, so you're just kind of chiming in, you're following, you're listening um, to things that aren't um, impactful, recognize how you feel after you've heard it. Start paying attention. Get in a space of awareness how conversations make you feel, how posts, even on social media, make you feel. Listen, your heart, the, the way you feel, your energy, everything changes. Everything changes if you're paying attention. Words decide how you process information. So the words that have been spoken spoken over you, um, the words that you've been around it, and this example just came to mind. So in corporate America, there is a, um, what could I call it? A culture, right? And so much so when people move out from corporate America to become entrepreneurs, one of the reasons it's difficult for them to build a brand is because they're still doing it from the space of the box, the words, the process, all of the things that they had to do in corporate. So when they hear entrepreneurial ideas, it doesn't even register to them because the words that they were accustomed to hearing begin to create this if it's not like this, then it must not be right. This is how people have a difficult time when they are switching from being an employee to an entrepreneur. So when they begin pricing their products and their services, they're still thinking employee-based. They're still thinking by the hour and not by the value. But from an entrepreneurial space for someone who's truly building their business is from a value-based perspective, right? All of this has been dictated by words. So words that you use and hear in varying situations also develop your capacity. They develop your ability. That's pretty much what capacity is. But words develop all of those things. So words are energy in different forms of vibration. I know I'm going a little heavy, but I ain't coming down. Y'all, I want y'all to stretch right? So words are energy in different states of vibration. Now I'm going to make it real, really plain for you all. You know how you can be, or you may even see this on social media often where you say, 
Um, uh, people may say they messed up my vibe. They messed up my vibration. It was words, right? So words are energy in different states of vibration. So on this evening, I want to ask you, what are you, what level are you vibrating on? What level are you vibrating on? When I was in a toxic relationship, I would get, you know, they would be spewing out crazy stuff and, you know, I'm trying to just chill and just like whatever. But eventually, right? Hey, Nikki dear, eventually on the inside of me, I would, I would start responding. Like, you know, you, you're not going to be talking to me like that, right? But guys, this is the thing about being mindful of your environment. Because every single time, whether you're responding to someone who has said something out of the way to you, or whether you're responding to someone who has done you unfairly, when you put the words out to them, they boomerang back to you. When you put the words out to them, even someone who is saying something, you know, that's a little off, those words that you said, they come back to you. That energy comes right back to you. It's why you feel drained. If you've been, you know, in an um, unhealthy confrontational uh, situation, it's why you feel drained. When you're going back and forth on social media with people, I don't do it. I'll cut it off. I'll just stop, <laughs> right? Because I understand that those words have to come back to me and it changes my vibration. Now, did you guys know that the way that you earn revenue is also from a vibrational or an energy-based level? Maybe I'm going too deep. If I'm going too deep, tell me I'm going too deep. If not, say, it's okay, keep going. Tell me if it's okay to keep going in the comments. Even how you earn revenue is from a space of energy. Your energy and your vibration. Remember I said words are energy in different vibrations. Lord have mercy. And if the words that you've been hearing, the words that you've been speaking are not on the right vibration, it will impact how you earn revenue. Guys, your words are so powerful. There's a scripture, and I, I don't know it by heart, but it talks about um, the tongue, you know, being one of the most powerful weapons, right? I think uh, it, it talks about it bringing life or death. That is um, an actual statement. Like, it, it's a true statement. It's not just a parable. Like, it, that's, that um, scripture in itself is true without you breaking it down or anything, right? So our tongue has the ability to give life or give death. So I'm going to ask you on this evening, how are your words building your destiny? Even in a time like this, what you say is so important. Because remember I said the words that you put out into the atmosphere, they have to come back to you, right? So if you're speaking fear, if you're speaking doubt, if you're speaking lack, all of that has to come back to you. It was something I wrote that I wanted to be, um, oh, the more you hear, speak, or say specific words, the more it becomes your truth. This is why I am a an avid um person when it comes to I'm avid about saying affirmations that's a better way to say it because affirmations help you to change your vibration and your energy I've been saying affirmations forever got them on note cards I actually wrote an affirmation guide many of you may have um, purchased it or seen it but because I understand the power of words and when I want to change my situation I change my words right because your words impact what it is that you're thinking. This is so heavy. Did you guys know that your words impact your thinking, which is your mind, 
right? But after you say them repeatedly, it begins to become what's actually in your heart. It's the reason why you change your mind often, but not your actions. Do I have my tea? It's the reason why you can change your mind. You can say, I'm not doing that anymore. Or I'm getting ready to do this, but not your actions. And, one of, and that reason is because what's in your heart is really what's in your subconscious mind. Yes, words frame your world. What's in your heart is really what's in your subconscious mind. So when you say, you know, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, but your actions never change, it's because the words that you're speaking right now are just in your, in your mind, but they aren't in your heart. <coughs> Excuse me. It hasn't become real to you. Your heart is what's in your subconscious mind. For those of you who are believers, there's scripture that says the heart is deceptive who can know it. So you know how you hear people say all the time, God knows my heart or I know what's in my heart. Guys, our heart is so deceptive because what we're thinking is not always what's actually in our heart, right? So it may be in your mind to do things differently in your business, but the reason you never take action, because that's not what's in your heart. And we always do what's in our heart. Lord have mercy. We always do what's in our heart, but not always what's in our mind. Think You, you guys think about this. If we did what was in our mind, some of us, one, would be in trouble, right? And some of y'all will be millionaires. But because what you're thinking is not, you know, what's matching what's in your subconscious mind. We always do what's in our hearts. Absolutely. And so if you've developed habits, right, um, and patterns, or if it's in your heart that you don't believe that it's possible... But your mind is saying that it's possible. The reason you don't take action on it is because you don't fully believe it. That's not truly what's in your heart. And so we all have a DNA, right? So remember I said we actually start, when we're born, we start with a clean slate. And what's hap what happens is words that we get from environments, our parents, and things like that begin to go into like our word processor, Right? The only other thing about when we're first born is we do have a DNA like a from a molecular structure like our parents and things like that. But scientifically, it's been proven that our DNA can even change by the words that we're hearing. Now, if your mind, if you want your body to get in alignment with your mind, you have to retrain your brain by what you're saying to, to it, by what you're hearing. And it has to be consistent. Right. Your words are powerful. I'm going to come on tomorrow and I'm going to talk about your mind. I'm going to go deeper on your mind. But for tonight, I want you to really think about the words that you've been saying, not just out loud, but even the words that you've been saying to yourself, because you are creating your destiny by the words that you speak, the words that you hear, um, the words that you embrace is creating your destiny. It's creating your reality. And if it feels like it's so much resistance, it's because your mind and your heart are not in alignment. You know, there's scripture that says, um, I'm doing everything in word, thought, and deed, right? Well, we can't get to the deed part, which is the action, because our words and thoughts and heart have to come into alignment. And oftentimes it's when we need to retrain our brain by what we're saying and what we're hearing. That's my take on today, guys. Join us inside 3D Success Academy. We deep dive. We're working together for a whole year. You make tremendous shifts towards your destiny inside the academy. Um, RenewFullCircle.com slash 3DA. RenewFullCircle.com slash 3DA.